Justin Lofton, rocking the Seek Sumo shirt, man. <laughs> Fellow SoCal entrepreneur, welcome to Sales Podcast. How are you? I'm doing well, Wes. Thanks for having me. Really hey, excited to be here with you. Thanks for putting down the spiked eggnog for a couple of minutes to uh, tough. to talk with me. Uh, <laughs> you know, but feel free to sip. Uh, you know, during the during the call, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I got, can you see my big uh, Pep's Blue Ribbon back there? Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, I got to get it. PBR. That's how we (laughs) roll, baby. Big time. Uh, That's a keg in and of itself. That's a Texas size Pep's Blue Ribbon. (laughs) Uh, All right, man. So you and I have known each other for a little while. Uh, We got to uh, have a little breakfast back in October and uh, really get to know you a little better. But for those that don't know you, would you mind, you take a minute or two, Tell us what you're up to, kind of your background, and uh, how you came to be where you are today, and then we'll dive down the rabbit hole. Sure, I'd love to. You know, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. I started my first business at eight years old, fixing bikes out of my garage. It lasted about two weeks, and uh, <laughs> because I listened to older kids that told me I was stupid and I couldn't do it. Uh, um, at eleven, I started a landscaping company uh, with a buddy of mine, and, and did that for a couple years, and. You know, just over the years, I went and managed a, at the age 14. I went to work for McDonald's, which was an amazing uh, opportunity to see how systems work. It was really eye opening for me as I started to do different things and, and play in different businesses and different industries. And, you know, I just kind of I've worked in, I've done a lot of blue collar work and white collar work, and I've just kind of done everything you can imagine under the sun, even as a young kid. And I really enjoyed it. I was looking for new opportunities. Uh, eventually, I got into, I went from being a plumber, actually, to getting into the IT space, becoming a Cisco engineer, ultimately building networks all over the globe for you know enterprise businesses. And then I sort of, during that time, during, in 1998, I started selling supplements online. I really enjoyed um, you know, the nutrition space, still do today. And, you know, really had some great success early on when the internet just kind of came about and I uh, was building websites and HTML and going to Overture and buying traffic before Google and all this stuff even existed. And um, I had some early success there and, and kind of transitioned from uh, the IT space and helping that business grow beyond just being an engineer. I moved into pre-sales and sales and really fell in love with marketing during that time and um, ultimately ended up uh, you know, sort of leading a whole team of engineers when I was in the IT space which gave me some time to do some consulting. I really wanted to leverage some of the the things that I had done in Google's algorithm with SEO and some of the uh, previous uh, success that I've had in uh, the internet space to help other businesses that I saw. Most of them were offline businesses that needed to you know, set up e-commerce and really start to scale their business online because of the opportunities available to them. And I sort of sat in as a CMO and did consulting for a couple of uh, e-commerce businesses and helped them double and triple their revenues in 24 months. It really was satisfying for me. That was where I got a lot of fulfillment was helping those small businesses. And so I started an agency uh, called Fresh Agency in uh, 2011. And I really started um, you know, providing SEO services. I had a formula that I had put together that I had been using over the years within Google's algorithm that really consistently worked and I was able to massage it over time as Google made their changes and really did, um, you know, I started the business working with a lot of folks in the Infusionsoft space. I personally started using Infusionsoft in 2007, and so I had uh, a lot of folks in the in the Infusionsoft community that already uh, were friends with them and colleagues with them, and and uh, a lot of folks were looking for traffic, and uh, I was able to deliver that traffic using Google stuff and um, did very well. I knew that I was going to have to go upstream. I knew that the social media thing was going to be an important part of SEO success and it just needed to mature and ultimately it did and so I knew that when I started Fresh Agency in 2011 that I would have to offer you know full breadth of services um, to businesses and um, and so fast forward you know a couple years ago when um, when Goldman gave Infusionsoft to 54 million you know I really at that time you know we had taken Fresh Agency from a small uh, group of Infusionsoft uh, power businesses and I really wanted to go up to the mid market the folks that had you know marketing folks and budgets established and um, and so I started to develop some software to help us understand markets a lot better so that we could really get to the who what when where and how of a market qu- quicker using software because I had done some software development in the IT space previously and ultimately 
Um, I didn't get that excited in the morning uh, helping enterprises and mid mid level companies make more money. I really got excited um, back in the days when I was helping small businesses, whether they were my own or I was doing consulting. And so I was really excited to see that Goldman had given uh, Infusionsoft some dollars to grow the business. It really, um, it really showed me that Infusionsoft had grown up and that they'd built an ecosystem. And you know, it given me a couple years to develop some software and some process that would allow me to go back to the small business community and offer you know traffic g generation essentially for reasonable price points you know because it's very difficult to do that and bring down the price points for those folks and that's when I launched the Zenfusion brand and uh, this was in uh, May of last year and um, had tremendous success helping a lot of small businesses in the Infusion Shop community to start generating traffic and. Um, and then from there, you know, really understanding, uh, I've been having my hands in Facebook advertising, helping clients for the last three and a half, four years now. And I just, it's been a massive switch from years of doing SEO work and ultimately finding that the Facebook advertising platform is just so powerful in its ability to, to generate leads for folks and ultimately retarget folks. And that's where people are hanging out. That in large part, we went from an agency that did, you know, 90% of our revenue from SEO work. Um, and basically, you know, that entire thing shifting to being mostly Facebook advertising work for those clients. So it's it's been a, a crazy ride just over the last four years, and it's it's largely because of um, you know what Facebook is giving a lot of businesses these days and the opportunities that are there for us. You know, I didn't realize you were so flighty, man. I mean, why do you just <laughs> stick with HTML web design, huh? I mean, you were good at it. So. I tried it, yeah. I wasn't that good at it, actually. <laughs> that was the problem. I mean, that was the beginning of the internet. You were there, and now you just, you're just chasing shiny objects, and now you're on Facebook. I see how you are. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, I, as an entrepreneur, I, I call it the, 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 you know, I, I consider it a disease. It's the shiny object syndrome. We have to say no a lot to really stay focused. So. Right. But how, how do you balance that? How do you know when it's time to make a shift? Uh, are you constantly looking? Uh, was it just obvious? You know, because that's a big shift that you made uh, going from SEO uh, work into Facebook uh, and building a couple of different companies and building it around different uh, software platforms like Infusionsoft. I mean, those aren't just, you know, what am I going to have for lunch kind of decisions. Those are big decisions. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a great question. I think that you know what I've learned from a lot of the mentors that I've followed over the years, be it Robert Kiyosaki, Tony Robbins, you name it. I mean, I've got it's probably a hundred guys that I've followed over the years and studied. Was just that, um, but I remember being specifically from Robert Kiyosaki, who from Rich Dad Poor Dad, who basically you know helped me understand that you always keep your mind open to opportunities. Um, there are opportunities all around us. Uh, most of which you should be saying no to, but just having an open mind to those opportunities allows the mind to uh, germinate those seeds over time, and then you you can make an educated decision based on you know what you know in the spaces that you operate when the best time for you uh, is to you know come to market with something you think is going to bring value, and that's you know I think that really is how I've been able to sort of move quickly while still delivering more value with every move that I've made. How do you know or juggle like how much you should do like in developing a company or developing tools versus hiring somebody or outsourcing it while you continue to look at other opportunities? You know what I mean? Because there, there's some core development has to be done, but you're always got to be looking out too. So how do you, how do you balance that? Yeah, no, it's not an easy one because, you know, the technician in me wants to take off and do it all myself and, you know, certainly with the experience that I've had over the years, I do have the tools and the resources to do a lot of the work myself, but I, you know, it's all about analyzing, understanding where your time is best spent and, you know, if you can, um, you know, find the folks that can help you get to your goals faster. Um, and that's not always easy, you know, it's not always easy to find those folks. It's not always easy to, you know, be able to afford them, right? So, you know, I, I always try and get creative and find ways to um, bring value without necessarily exchanging dollars with folks. 
and I found that it just played in my favor uh, and for those that that worked with me and that they you know were able to generate exposure and and um, experience for themselves and you know sometimes so I, I do a lot of joint ventures I, I find ways to partner with folks that that get an upside they get some skin in the game when they're working with me and um, and or you know we just hire out the folks that we need to, to close the gaps that are necessary so I can hope that, so that I can focus on business development and the things that, that will help us bring more value to the market. Well, I keep offering people, you know, if they do some work for me, they can come babysit my kids as a reward because <laughs> they're just such cute, well-behaved kids and nobody has taken me up on that. Horrible conversion rate on that, yeah. huh? <laughs> do I need to change my offer? <laughs> <laughs> That just ain't right. Well, you just obviously haven't shown them how wonderful and beautiful your children are. Then. That's right. So I'm going to have to... <laughs> one of those that you know pull up in my in our van throw a hood on them and bring them over right and <laughs> maybe the only way it happens. dump them in the middle of the room surrounded mm -hmm. by the kids uh, <laughs> see how cute they are exactly. um so um barters joint ventures i mean that's all cool that's still hard i mean in in your development world i mean zinfusion uh is is a beefy bit of software i mean it's something you created on your own uh how do you juggle uh, your developers? Do you use overseas people? Do you use, uh, are they part-time contractors? Do you hire them as employees? Yeah, great questions. Yeah, and just for the folks listening, I mean, we're, we've taken Zinfusion from a full-service uh, digital marketing agency. Ultimately, uh, we're going to be relaunching it as a, um, call it the Upwork for marketing experts and, and folks that are bringing high value to small businesses. So really closing that gap between folks that don't want to be listed on, you know, places like Upwork or Guru.com and commoditized with, you know, the likes of folks from the Philippines or India, but have a ton of value to bring to the small business community. And there's a, there's so many small business owners that are using Infusionsoft and other platforms that just don't know where to go to find resources to help them and, and be able to you know make that transaction in a secure way between the buyer and the seller and the provider and have someone in the middle that really understands marketing automation to make sure that those projects are being done as as the provider is is promising right and so we're we're shifting to that quickly so that we can close that gap in the marketplace and um, and then obviously with SyncSumo, we're you know developing tools that, that help sync Facebook advertising platform, the Facebook advertising platform with the various um, you know automation platforms, be it Infusionsoft, Active Campaign, Mailchimp, etc. And so, yeah, it's a great question. You know, over the years, I've I've actually had great success with uh, the Philippines. Um, you know. I've used India. It's been very difficult with India because the the language gap, their understanding of what you're asking them to do. In many cases, I've found that you know, that they'll go write a manuscript based on what you ask them to do and show you the manuscript rather than just doing the work. Uh, I get I, I got a lot of that from India. So you know, as much as I love them and they are hard workers, I uh, had a lot of frustration there in, in India over the years. Um, I've had great success in the Philippines uh, hiring folks there. They're great. They're phenomenal. Their English is great. Um, but again, it's a challenge. It's one of those deals where you have to go through five or ten of them to find somebody that really you know, is a good fit for you. And it may not be that uh, they didn't have the skills or whatever, but something is going on that's just not a good fit, doesn't feel right to you. And you just have to accept that if you're going to go and use those those resources. Um, ultimately, I've, I've found that uh, at the end of the day, I, you know, finding folks here in the states that um, are providing great value, are experts in their space, and paying a bit of a premium work, has worked out best for me. Um, or doing, like I said, a joint venture uh, with those folks to find a way to give them skin in the game. Um, but I think that you know, it's really about the task at hand and what you're trying to accomplish. And certainly, if if you can find that sweet spot of finding someone in the Philippines um, or another country that uh, meets your needs, then take advantage of it because they're smart people all, all across the world. You know. Right. So, do you have like two separate teams? You know, do you have a Zen Fusion team and a Sync Sumo team? Like they don't even know each other necessarily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely some overlap, but yeah, we try and keep things separate. Otherwise, um, you know. You get distracted and, and you don't know uh, what priorities you should have. So the teams are separate and it's best to keep it that way if you've got multiple businesses on your hands. You may have some folks in the middle, kind of the glue I call it, where 
you know, folks that help you kind of organize and stay on task with the things you need to do. And uh, they, they may traverse multiple businesses, but generally the teams are separate, yeah. So how are you seeing things shift now in the SEO versus Facebook world? Um, you know, I, I'm kind of self-taught on SEO and became very good, very competent, not uh, a whiz to your level. I appreciate the tips you gave me last week. I've already put them into the awesome. uh, the best CRM site. Uh, I love that little curator plugin. I'll, uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I'll link to that uh, in the show notes on this. Uh, man, I was I knew something like that had to exist, but man, yeah. it was it was so easy and so affordable. I mean, I'm starting with the free one just as I learn it. And as I crank this up, but I just finished the quiz uh, today, actually, and we're making it all pretty. But uh, I mean, ten bucks a month. I mean, that's unbelievable, is, right? Is awesome. Uh, the next solution up is six grand a year. You know? Yeah, that's insane. But I mean, that's just for curating content. But I mean, what? I know the big word now is the user experience, right? UXO over SEO. So. Um, and I know mobile is really catching on and applications. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, should people, I mean, do they even have to pay attention to SEO anymore? I mean, should they shift their focus to, to social media? Should they shift to paid advertising? Uh, I mean, where do you see things in 2016? Yeah, I mean, a couple of things, you know, and I'll start with saying that, you know, one, I really see a big opportunity and I see a big push and I see that 2016 will be a great year for small businesses to start to really put business automation in place. Um, there's a lot of solutions out there, many of them extremely affordable now, um, that allow folks to really take advantage of automation within a business, no matter what type of small business it is. Even the old school offline guys can start to take advantage of this stuff. But I think the uh, you know encompassing umbrella that we're gonna talk a lot about and others that we're partnered with, um, with what some of the stuff we're doing with Syncsumo, they're gonna start talking about is really about relationship marketing. And that, that flows down to relationship advertising, where now we can use advertising um, to sort of build those relationships. You know, it's very common now for people to really create a personal connection to brands. And Facebook and, and their, their news feed, this has been going on for years now in the news feed and Facebook. And so it's very common. This is an opportunity for a business to exist where they hang out with their friends and family. And that's just that's a massive shift in the behavior of the consumer where they are very comfortable with seeing advertising, especially if you're resonating messaging and offers and things that they can provides value to their life, right? And this is the first time in history of advertising that you're not necessarily interrupting them with something they don't necessarily want to see, TV, radio, newspaper, magazine. In this case, you're in their newsfeed, and they're okay with it because you're providing value if you're doing things right and you're you're writing the right ad copy and, and focused on understanding the folks that you're putting ads in front of. It really allows you to build a relationship with them over time, and um, that's not always easy to do with SEO. It's getting better, you know, with some of the things that Google's coming out with, with in their advertising space with customer match and other features even within YouTube and retargeting list and those things. So they're, they're headed in that direction and they're getting very close. But Facebook and the fact that folks hang out there and they hang out there to hang out and see what their friends and family are saying within that news feed and for a brand to be able to position themselves there is just extremely powerful. And what, what I found in the SEO space and you know the, for the folks that, that we were working with at Zenfusion, our full service clients, is that we would start with Facebook because once you get those social signals going, which is a huge indicator of uh, you know great content to Google now, that in many cases before we even start a link acquisition for them in the SEO world, they were already ranking you know page two, even bottom of page one with with only social signals coming into those pages because they were getting lots of shares and and things on Facebook, which which trigger Google to um, respond to that content and rank it higher in their engine. So. It's just shifting. SEO has shifted from, hey, you know, don't overly focus on building a bunch of links. Focus on content marketing, curating content, you know, using products like BlogMutt to get blogging going, um, and have somebody else provide, do the hard work that you know, content comes along with content creation for your site, and and then on the back end, once you've sort of laid a foundation of social signals and regular content creation, then you can roll in some link acquisition um, that 
can boost that to really the top of the end. It's, it's actually a lot easier. SEO is a lot easier than it used to be. Um, and if you understand how to leverage content and drive traffic from Facebook paid advertising to say a blog post that gets then gets a lot of you know attention and then Google picks up those signals. You gotta remember that Google owns Chrome and is now the widely most widely used browser. So whether you're typing in a brand directly into that browser in the address bar or traffic is coming from other platforms, Google's picking up on all that and those end up end up being signals for Google to rank your pages higher in their organic uh, search results. All right, so this is kind of like listening to Tom Brady say, yeah, a, a game-winning drive in the fourth quarter is really easy. You're going <laughs> to, you know, you got two timeouts. You're going to work the edges of the field. You're going to surprise them with some middle stuff. You're going to spike the ball a couple times to kill the clock. You know, run up the middle, kind of surprise them. Call one timeout, and then you throw it to a, the corner, and you uh, get a touchdown against, you know, a Hall of Fame, you know, Pro Bowl cornerback. Uh, uh, because, okay, so great, I got some ads running, and I finally got those dialed in. But you know, that probably cost me, I don't know, five hundred to a thousand bucks to split test some things and run some different ads and categories. And I bought the wrong, uh, had the wrong call to action. And then some got blocked. And then, uh, okay, so I finally got that going, and now people are great. They're clicking on it, but now. My website sucks. It's too slow. Uh, I got the wrong size images. Uh, some images aren't loading. The headlines are all wrong. Uh, my blog posts are too short. I might don't have the right use of images. Then I don't know about what the call of action is. And do I send them a free report? And is it a long report? Is it a short report? Is it a PDF? Is it a spreadsheet? Is it an MP3? And then how do I get them to opt in? And then do I tag them? And then do I follow up with them? You know, with one email or 17 emails? And are those 17 yeah. emails one day apart? I mean, uh, how do you figure all that out, right? Because that's that's the stuff that always drives me nuts is to see these guys say, oh, it's so simple. But it's like there's 87 moving pieces and parts in there. So, I mean, what's a poor little company to do? Yeah, no, it's a, it, you hit the nail on the head. It, there's a lot of moving parts, right? And, and you know, where do you go? How do you nail that down? What do you focus on? And it's one of the reasons that we, we you know, with SyncSumo, we partner with Digital Marketer to really help educate the market, you know, because the reality is that there are lots of people that are trying to educate on specific things. You know, we're going to educate on Facebook advertising and, and retargeting and how you leverage that when we relaunch SyncSumo. But really, at the end of the day, what I found is that, you know, for a small business or a, a marketer that really wants to stay up on this stuff and what's working for other folks and really join a community, I highly recommend you join DM Labs. It's less than 40 bucks a month and you, you're plugged into tens of, you know, I think they have over 10,000 members in DM Labs and they have a private Facebook group because it is it can be very overwhelming. And at the end of the day, what you have to remember is how can I provide value to the market? Do you understand your audience? What I find is a lot of small business owners, especially ones that have been in business for a long period of time, they make a lot of assumptions about their customers and their and their ideal audience, and they don't really step out of the box and go and look at Amazon reviews of a book that's on the same subject or read reviews from people, or they don't really even listen to, you know, they don't go back and read the support tickets that have been opened by their customers or uh, emails they've gotten from customers or even testimonials that have been sent. They don't do a great job of actively looking at the market um, from an outsider. They're sort of in their own boat. We all get that way in our own business. And we all have to sort of step out or have someone else um, on our team helping us sort of step out of the market or listen to the market um, so that we can provide the value that the market is asking for. And so what I find is that if you focus more on that, then the answers to all those questions that you came up with, um, that everybody in, in, the, in the marketing space or someone trying to, to grow their business is trying to figure out, a lot of the answers will come to you because the market will tell you in large part what they like, what their what their where the pain points are, and and how you can solve them. Generally, you know, in the, in today's world, people want to consume content that helps them improve their life. And whether you do that through a blog post or you provide you know short lead magnets, um, 
those can be can set the stage or set a foundation for you to be successful in any endeavor you're trying to do. All the other details are typically technical details that can be refined over time. You just kind of have to take that initial step and get started. And I've found even in you know the years I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with guys like Frank Kern and all this stuff over the last two decades. Um, and every program that I paid two grand for, I knew, you know, hey, if I get one nugget from this that can take me to the next level, it's gonna, it's gonna ROI for me, right? Right. And so, what's unbelievable now is that you can get into DM Labs and all this stuff is nailed down. They've already gone through it a thousand times over, and you know, whether it's Facebook advertising, YouTube, setting up a blog, whatever you can imagine that needs to be done in the digital space to grow your business, you can get it for less than forty bucks. So. That at the end of the day is really what I recommend folks do because it's been great for me. It's a great resource for my team, and you know the the, the community and the group that Digital Marketer has developed is just phenomenal. They're great people. So how do you know where to start with somebody though? They call you up and they say, "Hey, I want to get better at Facebook advertising," um, and it's always that it's that double-edged sword, right? It's 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 how I got into marketing because I was in sales, and sales and marketing mm -hmm. were always at odds. And so you can have great marketing. But if your sales are terrible, you're just wasting money. So how do you, do you have like a litmus test? You put people through, you know, to decide if you take them on as a client or like, whoa, hey, you know, we'll do your Facebook advertising, but first you got to fix your landing pages or your lead magnet or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's a great question because I did that. I mean, I think that um, what the way I felt was, you know, all of our services were offered month to month. And so... Uh, I really wanted to work with folks that I would have an opportunity to truly help. And so I would do a, an hour long pre sales call essentially with folks because um, I knew that one, worst case, if they uh, you know, weren't a good fit for us, they were going to walk away with some real value that, that I could give them on what to do and what to execute on and maybe even connect them with some other folks that could help them. And I know that that would you know, pay back over time with just helping folks do that. And I always enjoy talking to small businesses and helping them sort of take the next step to grow their business and get things right. But yeah, I mean it's it's critical because the problem is uh, a lot of a lot of them think they know they they think they want to do SEO, they think they want to do Facebook advertising when um, they've got a lot of other things they've got to get right first, right? The funnel isn't right, the offer isn't right. Um, they are taking an offline business online and they have so much work that has to be there before you can even send traffic from an ad or even an SEO. Um, and, I, and I think that it's important that you find a marketing expert that can build those funnels, help you automate some of the basic stuff, you know, really take an 80-20 of the business, what products really sell the most, you know, what, uh, what, what channels are already working for you that we can re-leverage. Is there content that you have offline that you just haven't thought of as content that could end up on a blog? You know, regurgitate stuff that was written by you know one of your team members four years ago in a booklet that you use for employees and training that now is actually high quality content you could be providing to the open market. So there's a lot of things that I would go through to help folks understand what they need to do prior to even you know working with us. So what do you find? I mean, if you if you talk to a hundred clients, you know, a hundred prospects that think they want or they think they're ready for your services, or at least your Facebook services, how many of them actually are ready? And versus how many do you kind of take a step back and say, hey, you know, let's go back ten steps and fix that, you know, your funnel, your offer, um, blah blah blah, before you start paying for for traffic. Yeah, you know, when we started this Infusion brand, and really we're just sort of trying to play a fly on the wall uh, to understand what folks really wanted from us as a brand and as a company. Uh, I would say that, yeah, one in 30 were ready. You know, it was, it was a lot. It, you know, I had to go through a lot of folks that basically were, you know, running a business, chief cook and bottle washer, and they thought that, you know, if they spent, you know, X number of dollars a month with us, that we would save them or we would create a business that they thought of. And so, um, you know, as, as time went on, we really figured out where we wanted to position ourselves. Um, we focused on, you know, working with folks that already had at least uh, some form of a funnel, marketing funnel in place um, so that we, if we were going to drive traffic, like you said, drive leads into uh, a sales process or a marketing process that those leads could turn into sales. And, you know, without that, you know, we're driving a lot of quality leads to folks that don't, can't don't have a process in place to convert them and we certainly help folks put some of that together but we found that ultimately you know working with folks that built those for small businesses 
And then once those were built coming to us to, to drive the traffic to them, uh, we had the most success, you know? And so there's definitely a process that a small business needs to go through and, and really putting that together prior to uh, starting to drive traffic from any channel. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, that's a, and that's a huge waste of your own time, right? Or resources. I mean, talking to one out of 30. So um, were you able to put like quizzes in place or did you just tighten up your offer and kind of narrow it uh, so it was more obvious like, hey, you're not ready. You know, don't even click this button because you're not ready. Yeah, I mean, in the early days, you know, one thing and I think this is important too, if you're starting a business and you're trying to understand the market, you know that you have a passion for being in, the, in a new market or a market that you've had experience in the past. You know, one of the things I try and do is not make assumptions about what I think, uh, you know, the market wants. And that's why I took all those calls is that I wanted to just hear what people say and, and really understand where majority of the small business community was that were seeking out the services that we were offering. And then that led us to putting in place a three-step process. It was almost like we didn't call it an application, but it, when you, um, you know, when you requested uh, uh, a meeting with me, it was a three-step process. I understood how much revenue you were making, the type of business you were in, average transaction sizes. I was really asking the questions that I would ask on the phone prior to our call, so that I could make those calls as productive as possible and. If I clearly, you know, saw that they weren't a good fit for us, I would find ways to tell them what they need to do next, and you know, not waste their time on a, an hour call when you know we couldn't help each other. But I always left them with some sort of resource that they could take and 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 go from. You know. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, I I had put that in place as well. Just using something as simple as time, uh, time tray, time driver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 or 40 bucks a year, I think. And, you know, people want to Amazing. reach out and, you know, it's like, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then you know, my assistant will even screen it. You know, if they don't answer the questions, then she hops right. in and says, hey, you didn't answer the questions. Right. Um, and just because even at a minimum, just having an agenda for the call, uh, we get more out of it. Yeah. And I, you know, once I could have that, um, that process in place, people actually, uh, respected the fact that I had that and they they were more interested in working with us simply because we had built that for ourselves you know right it was interesting I mean yeah and you got to be a product of the product you know I mean I, I grew my business uh, with infusion socks I used it the way it was built you know uh, only now am I really starting to customize it and then branch into other things like HubSpot and mm -hmm. nimble and whatever uh, but I, I built my cord you know Despite the inefficiencies uh, of Infusionsoft, and you know they haven't evolved or developed as fast as some of the others, there's still the fundamental processes that'll run no matter what, uh, yeah. and it just it helped me grow. Yeah, no, and I think that's something that you know uh, us folks in the marketing space, especially helping small businesses, uh, we can't forget. I mean, at the end of the day, the you know the power of simply responding to folks in an automated fashion is the 80-20 of what we, why we use these different tools, right? Infusionsoft or uh, even, you know, the SyncSumo, automating the basic stuff that allows us to be more efficient and follow up with folks that have some level of interest that are saying, hey, I'm raising my hand. I want to get your lead magnet. I want to, I want to hear more about what, what you have and building that relationship that I talked about earlier as a brand and as individuals that represent a brand. Um, you know, you're right. All, there's a lot of fancy stuff and a lot of crazy automation that can be put in place, but sometimes small business owners get sort of glossy eyed and, and see that as shiny objects, but they don't have some basic, you know, follow up going on within their business. You know? Yeah, I'm always surprised. People want to come to me for copywriting help, and nine times out of ten, I mean, I make a, a very short sequence of very short emails. <laughs> You know, yeah. just being a human being and staying in touch uh, and, you know, pull out your iPhone and make a little video sit at your desk and embed it in the YouTube, you know, and say, hello. Right. I mean, something like that. People are like, oh, my gosh. Uh, You're a real person. Right? Yeah. And, and I can't overemphasize the need for something physical. Um, I'll do it for prospects, for, for prospects on big projects and certainly new clients, depending on the different course, whatever they buy. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's my Infusionsoft book or my my second book or 
just a handwritten card. You know, people are, I always get comments like, hey, that's a nice touch. Thanks for sending that. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, no, and it, you know, as an online guy that's been, at, you know, at it with online for so long, you know, in the in the days that I was consulting and doing all that, there was still, you know, we we really all always supported the 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 uh, synergy of multiple channels, both online and offline. We just find that exponentially, businesses would grow because you're leveraging postcards, you're leveraging the you know the the funky package that shows up in the mail that you didn't expect, and then you've got email and Facebook and everything else. I mean. They're, they're, it's so uh, impactful what you can do with just small things that leverage different channels because you a touch you touch that person in a different way, physical touch, and they hear you in a video. You know all those things play into building that relationship faster so that you can get closer to a sale. Because at the end of the day, they're they're buying you as a person. And a lot of small business owners, unfortunately, try and position themselves behind a brand. When they know that you know their business has grown largely by referral, and because they know the owner or they know the staff, and 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 you've got to leverage that in the digital marketing world because it's so impactful, especially now with the behavior of consumers being very comfortable with connecting with brands, you know, and individuals that represent brands. Right. So, are you still taking on private clients, or is your focus now on your different software packages? Yeah, no, we're no, we're no longer. Uh, taking on uh, full service digital marketing clients. Um, we're focused on launching SyncSumo 2.0, which should be available in the next few weeks. We're alpha testing now. We really wanna bring, um, with the new platform, we wanna bring a new approach to the solving the problem of sort of connecting small business uh, marketers to Facebook. And so we're gonna be you know, really bringing something unique to the marketplace that allows us to deliver a high amount of value beyond what the current marketplace is offering to solve some of those challenges and um, we'll have training attached to that so folks can you know they're really just getting started can um, can understand how to take advantage of Facebook advertising because it can be extremely overwhelming at first it has gotten a lot easier Facebook has, has brought out some products and streamlined their what they're doing with their tool sets to allow uh, new marketers to take advantage of the platform in a very simple way and so we're hoping to bring that education to market. We've teamed with Digital Marketer and others to do that. And uh, so we're excited to sort of bring a new tool set to the marketplace that's also attached to training that will allow folks to really feel confident and be able to take the first steps to be successful using the Facebook advertising platform. And then with this infusion, uh, again, within a handful of weeks, we hope to relaunch it as a platform. Uh, ultimately to, to bring marketing experts and developers and app developers and, and even guys that are doing Facebook advertising and providing those services, SEO, and, and allowing them to connect with small business owners that are looking for those services. Because I think what's happened is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the, the service providers, they don't use those, the Upworks uh, and those types of platforms. They don't want to be a commodity. And the small business owners are, are submitting jobs there and really looking for experts, and they just have a limited response from folks that aren't even in their own time zone. And uh, right. we're hoping to close that gap with the news infusion launch too. Very nice. All right, so we will have links to both of those, but it's uh, Sync, S-Y-N-C, right? SyncSumo.com yeah. and Zen, with a Z, Zenfusion.com uh, are your two places. Uh, we'll send folks, so uh, any parting words of wisdom, what should our listeners do? What's the one thing they should do when they uh, get off the treadmill or get off the airplane, uh, they're back at work? Uh, what should they do after listening to this uh, episode? Yeah, well, I highly recommend you go to SyncSumo.com. You can go ahead and uh, request access to the new platform. And we're, Once you're on the request list, we're going to give you a way to get to the front of the line um, so that you can get access to the platform as soon as it's available. And, you know, I really want you to start thinking about relationships um, in your in your business. Um, that's going to be huge for 2016 and I want you to start to think about how you have relationships with prospects and, uh, and your customers today because there's so much opportunity to leverage that with the opportunities within Facebook and other channels in today's marketing world. So. You mean just getting the microphone, get up in their face saying, you better buy this right now, that, that, <laughs> that's not working anymore? No, unfortunately uh, it takes a little bit more effort than that. <laughs> 
All right. Although I, I'm sure if they combine your sales skills with what we're talking about, it could be extremely. Amen. But I'm potent. not one of those. Not one of those in your face. <laughs> There are some out there, but um, hey, you know what? I'm I'm changing the world one one sales training client at a time. Yeah, that's all we can do. <laughs> all right, Justin Lofton, Sync Sumo. Thanks for coming on the Sales Podcast. Thanks, Wes. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Have a great day. Too.